advantage of the COVID, if there is an advantage, is that it got people back out into their own backyard, to the fields and forests of their own communities and maybe a few neighboring communities away. Trailheads have sprung up all over in places that there were marked trails, but they never made a real effort to create parking and access to anybody that wanted to get to that trailhead that didn't live in the neighborhood. So things have really changed as far as our local forests go. The thing is, people are exploring them. And as they explore these local forests, they're looking at what they imagine to be normal. Well, normal is not what they're looking at. The forest that you can see through the cloud of mayflies, black flies, that are swirling around my head is made up predominantly of yellow birch and red oak. Although I see a couple of cottonwoods poking their heads out and there's some maples as there always will be. I think you might have heard me say before that if you want to see some beautiful trees, get out on a riverbank because these trees haven't been logged. Riverbanks hold some big, beautiful trees like this red oak. It's got to be a couple hundred years old. It's coming up and branching out, showing us that once upon a time, there was a field that came right to the edge of this river. Not anymore, though. And on the other side of the river, you can see one of our threatened species right over here. Let's go over and investigate. So you can see growing out of the riverbank right there with their roots exposed, a pair of beeches. It could be a stump sprout, I'm not sure, or it could just be a pair of conjoined beeches that sprouted really close to one another. And we can look at the canopy of this beech tree and we can see that it is not doing well. What we're looking at up above, that's shot, uh, blocking out most of the light, are the leaves of an oak. But what we have here is a beech tree that's suffering from what's called beech leaf disease and we can see the beech leaves here this is a fairly healthy beech leaf right here and these are leaves that are less than healthy pretty healthy less than healthy there's a there's a very healthy looking beech leaf right here beech leaves are very tough really if you ever grab a hold of them they uh almost got a, a plastic feel to them and they're, uh, they're strong, but the leaves are now shriveling up, and you can see the, the, uh, the colors fading. Healthy beech leaves right here, and then the unhealthy afflicted leaves. These leaves are being afflicted by a nematode, which is a tiny little worm. And literally, we discovered this back in 2012, and here we are 12 years later, and this nematode, which was first discovered in like Ohio, somewhere out there in the Midwest, they discovered a stand of beaches that were being afflicted by what they didn't really understand at the time. They took about five, six years to figure out that it was a nematode that was doing it, a tiny little worm. And somehow this disease spread by this little worm has spread all the way out to the coast of Maine, all the way through the Adirondacks of New York, here to Western Massachusetts and Connecticut. They, they feel like the disease is probably being spread by the wind and the rain. They're also suffering from another disease called beech bark disease, which is caused by a scale and uh, it creates these whirls on the bark and that beech bark is typically smooth. Every schoolyard in the United States in the 19th century seemed to have a beech tree within the neighborhood and the kids from the local school, I know I grew up by a school uh, in, in Western Mass and there was a beech tree down the street and everybody carved their names in it. And in those beaches you wouldn't want to try to carve your names in because the bark is all splitting and it's cankered that's not healthy beech bark right there our beech trees are in trouble serious trouble because of a nematode and because of a scale two different diseases 
and people say they might be gone. There's some more young ones growing right there, and you can see their shriveling leaves. They might be gone in 30 years. There's a arborist in Connecticut that thinks they have 30 years left and they'll all be gone. Seems like the young ones die first, followed by the more mature species. Now, that's interesting because we're going to lose the beaches that are growing along this river. What's going to replace them? The beaches are in places where once there were elm trees. Elms love rivers. They love thick, you know, alluvial soils. And there were elms here. In fact, the town I grew up in was known for having elm-lined streets. It was called Tree City because the streets of the city and the community center were completely encapsulated or caverned by these massive elm trees' branches. Elms grow in a vase shape, and so their tops met above the streets and provided shade during the summer. Here's a healthy beach right there and an unhealthy one to its left. Healthy, unhealthy. Well, the elm trees were all killed off, as you probably know, by the Dutch elm disease. By the 1920s, we had lost a huge amount of them, and the last big ones are dying right now. Around the same time, the American chestnut took a major hit. And we see pretty much the entirety of... The North American chestnut, which some people say composed as, as, no, not around here, but in some parts of the country, North Carolina, Tennessee, parts of Kentucky, maybe parts of Pennsylvania, 60% of the trees in the forest, 60% of the biomass of trees were chestnut, and they died. This is a beach right here, a little beach. Beautiful, healthy leaves on this guy. And the chestnuts all die. Dutch elm disease, the chestnut blight, and here in the northeast we've got another tree that's really getting hit, and it's the ash. And you guys probably know the culprit behind the ash because it's been pretty well publicized. So above me, and behind me here, you can see a tree that my buddy likes to call one fine piece. That is an ash tree. And ash trees are great for lumber. This one's huge. This one survived, I don't even, what, two forest clearances? This one probably sprouted around 1820, 1830. This is a big ash tree, but it's sick because it is being afflicted by our friend the emerald ash borer. And how long this beautiful tree lasts, I don't know. I don't know if it'll be able to fight it off. The emerald ash borer is very well known when it made its appearance. Uh, we had all over the Northeast, you know, wanted posters up. And kids were encouraged and are being encouraged. You see it, squash it. Problem is, you can't squash them all. And they get out into the forest system and the ash are being afflicted. Another pest that's come here because of the Columbian Exchange. They're destroying our ash trees. Beautiful, beautiful big ash tree. As a mushroom guy, I've had particular luck under that ash with uh, a very popular species. So as I walk up this old road and we look up the side of this hill, we can see what should be shrouded in twilight, but is now quite light for an understory. There's some ash right there, but most of what we're looking at up there are beaches. And they're not that old, but they're all sick. And I have kind of an idea what the forest is going to end up looking like. Here's a dead one. That's a dead beach right there, right next to it, another one. This is great for guys like me that hunt mushrooms. It's going to be great for about 15 years. Look at these dead beaches. Oh, that's a live maple, but there's a beach, and these two are beaches right here. These beaches are sick, and they're dying. Look at it, right here. Beach leaf disease and beach bark disease. Wow. 
These guys are sick. And what's the forest going to look like? Well, hear that thunder? The forest of the future is going to have something in it that we don't really like too much. It's going to be a lot different than it is today. And that would be another invasive bittersweet. The rate that bittersweet is spreading right now is ridiculous. There are places in Connecticut where it's actually pulling down trees. I'm talking about 70, 80 year old trees. Outrageous. The light is getting into the understory and bittersweet is starting to grow. Out here in the Berkshires, where I am right now, I'm finding bittersweet. You never saw it before. Look at those sick beech trees right here. They don't even look like beeches. Look at the bark. I would think that was a yellow birch. 